am so excited about today's season premiere. I think, really, my heart is palpitating. Oprah's car giveaway is iconic because it was peak Oprah being peak Oprah. Saint Oprah giving everybody a car. It's kind of very Elvis. The layers of manipulation that Oprah went through with her team, and also she screamed, let's be real. You get a car! You get a car! You get a car. And you get a car. Everybody gets a car! It's so funny, all these years later, people still say, ah! Like she's on a roller coaster. You could not tell me that that was not the most spontaneous thing in the world. I was like, oh, this woman has too much power. I was like, oh, I want this amount of power. So here's the real story. Oprah Winfrey is probably the most powerful woman in media in the world. And daytime audiences were gifted with the presence of her TV show for 25 years. She won so many Emmys as host that she ultimately withdrew her name from consideration so that other hosts would have a shot at winning. You also never knew what you were gonna get on her show. So any week, you could have a mix of an A-lister opening up on her couch, a panel on the most serious topic you've ever heard of, or the biggest, most unexpected giveaways. You're going to see Oprah, okay? You think you may see a celebrity cry, you may learn about a troubled family that got back together. Just the roulette of being like, oh God, what is Oprah gonna talk about today? This card giveaway obviously wasn't the first giveaway on the show. She had been doing this for years with her favorite things. Giving away of like products that were advertising on shows has always been a thing, but Oprah made it like the main event. Gift giving on the Oprah Winfrey Show started in 1996 with Oprah's favorite things. Every season since then on her show around Thanksgiving, Oprah would give away to the audience for the holidays her favorite things, duh, and America would go out and grab them. It was kind of a buying guide for something that was of quality but wasn't cheap. It was not like marketing. It was she genuinely enjoyed these things. She was giving away like chips, you know, it wasn't a f car. The story of how Oprah's favorite thing started is actually a pretty funny story. It all started when Ellen Rakuten, a founding producer on the show, got a pair of pajamas from her sister. So she gave Oprah that as a gift too. And then Oprah's like, I love these pajamas. I now want to give them to people. Oprah actually gave the pajamas to her staff first. They loved it. And she wanted to keep that going and spread them to the world. And of course, it was so successful. They did it every year, making whatever items Oprah chose mega hits. To this day, if Oprah's like, hey, I like this thing, that thing becomes a thing. My favorite thing about the favorite things is the audience reactions. Her audiences felt like they were given coffee and like ketamine. Like they were on the edge of their seats at all times. Everyone knows it's my birthday! There is a famous SNL sketch, which today you might think was a reaction to the car giveaway because the audience was just going wild for all of the gifts they were getting. But actually, mind blown here, that SNL sketch was actually seven months before the car giveaway. If Oprah wanted to start a cult, she could have at any moment. Those people were in the palm of her hand. What's also really interesting about the origins of the car giveaway is that it might not have even happened if it wasn't for Oprah's BFF, Gail King. Well, I don't like to claim credit for the car giveaway, but... Here's some Gail and Oprah backstory. They've been inseparable ever since working together at a local news station in Baltimore back in 1976. Their friendship is more important to me than like my own personal friendships. Oprah and Gail are like Mary and Rhoda. They are like Romy and Michelle. Wilma and Betty, okay? They're best friends from forever. They're good Judies. I love that Oprah and Gail have this bond that is unbreakable, unshakable. They're the BFFs that I model my BFF relationships off of. <laughs> Did you know that Oprah's middle name is Gail? It's spelled differently, but come on, her middle name is Gail. I love that moment of Oprah saying, she, she is, is the mother, mother I never had. She is the friend 
that everybody deserves. I, I don't, don't know, know a better person. person. I was so touched by her description of what I mean to her. Being Oprah's BFF, Gail appeared frequently on Oprah's show and became a public figure in her own right, which all plays into how she fits into the origin story of the car giveaway. I was at an airport minding my own business. A guy walks up to me, I'll call him Larry. We're really interested in giving um, a car to the show. I said, oh, okay. And I said, all right, that's nice. And he said, no, no, no. I mean, we're interested in giving a car to everyone in the audience. Well, at that point, I put down my suitcase and went, what did you say? The fact that it was a guy who just rushed to her and was like, Gail, I have cars for your best friend Oprah to give away. Like, what? He said, you know, we've been trying and, you know, we can't get anybody to return our calls. Well, why would they return the call? Because it just sounded so far-fetched. But there was something about him. There was something about him that, that I believed him. I believed him. I think that's iconic. Who is this man? We should know his name too. It's not like this was the first time that Gail got a pitch for Oprah, but Oprah didn't want to talk business with her friend. I mean, can you imagine how many people are pitching Oprah all the time? She said, I have a whole team that does this. I get this all day long. I really don't want to get it from you. I love that Oprah is like, uh-huh, yeah, put it in the email. There are still times that I just can't help it, which is what happened with the car. So I said, I'll take your card and I'll press it on your team. And I couldn't get to the phone fast enough. That's how good this idea was, that Oprah, after being like, yeah, uh-uh, not from you, still picked up the call, still listened to it, and was like, oh, hell yeah, we're doing this. And then from there, then the question became, how do we execute it? Most of her giveaways were things that she really, really, really loved. There was a part of Oprah that was like, well, it's a Pontiac. Is it my favorite thing? Oprah said that she wanted there to be a depth and intention to the car giveaway. They came up with the idea of let's figure out a way to give cars to people who are deserving. They had to be like tricky about it. They couldn't come out and say, do you hate your car and do you want a new one? Because then everyone would know. So they asked like little side questions like, what is your method of getting to work? How is your commute? Is it nice? Oprah is a girl who will tell you all of the time, love is in the details. One of the many details Oprah obsessed over in planning the car giveaway was the bows on the cars. She wanted to make sure that every car had a bow and not just a regular bow, it had to be an oversized jumbo red bow. She made her entire staff go re bow each car the night before when she realized the bows weren't big enough. You're getting a big bow on the front of the car because it's heart bow. That's a heart bow bow. Size does matter. And we know that Oprah now thinks that. I remember her looking at different shades of red to make sure it was the right shade of red. And then she made sure her, her outfit matched. It was a whole big thing. She's <laughs> always been very dramatic, don't you think? Yeah. Gail was like, no, you're not gonna wear that, are you? Oprah's like, hello, it matches the bow. The suit was a little formal. Um, she did give news anchor. That is the most Gail Oprah thing ever, is to like say to your best friend, like, is that what you're gonna wear? And then like all these years later, we're talking about it. She said, it'll be a great picture. <laughs> it'll be a great picture with the red. I, I she might've said something like, it won't be jarring to the eye or something like that. It does bring her together. I mean, you are going, okay, not only did Oprah give me a car, she gave me like the fabric off her back to wrap that car. It was kind of on brand, like I'm the gift, which I love. The truth is she could have sat up on that damn car buck naked and that would have looked good too. Finally, show day is almost here. Everyone on staff is so anxious to pull this off. And of course, Oprah's still got a couple more tricks up her red sleeve. It was such a secret. It was such a secret. So I, I don't even think Oprah could sleep that night because she was so excited about what was going to happen the next day. Okay, so this is big, this is really big. I flew from Connecticut to Chicago because I wanted to be in the show that day. I wanted to see it for myself. So it's showtime, and Oprah calls 11 audience members up to the stage and reveals something else they all have in common, a need for a new car. There's a Pontiac in the studio, and Oprah explains that she has one for each of these 11 people, and they're parked outside. 
So then the audience is now feeling this joy for them and maybe a little envy. You're like, holy shit, that's a lot of money and that's such a big ticket item. That's so cool. And then she goes, someone in this audience still has the chance to go home with a brand new fully loaded Pontiac G6. G6, G6. So then they all kind of kegel and they're like, oh my God, could I be getting a car too? Now I'm invested. Her manipulation comes with gifts, excitement, joy. She's lying for a good cause. And if that wasn't enough, then come the keys. Oprah like summons from the depths of Harpo Studios an army of models bearing jewelry boxes, one for each audience member, of course. And notice those bows. You guys, she loves a theme. We said everybody's gonna get a box and there's one key for one car left. If your box has a key, you will be the last person today to get one of those cute little G6s, okay? Now, Oprah is a master of attention to detail. So, of course, the night before the show, she had opinions on how the key boxes should be handled. The first thing people are gonna do is shake the box and everybody's gonna go, hey, I got a box. Do not open, do not shake it, do not shake it, do not open. If the keys were loose in the boxes, people would shake them and they would already know they were getting the car and it would give away the surprise. Do not shake it. All the calls, all of the emails about those boxes and not one person said, aren't people gonna shake them? So she made one of her producers go around and tape each key to the box. Open them up, open up every single one and tape them down. The finished product was well worth it. It's the moment of truth. She calls for a drum roll and then you all know what happens. Two, three. People just lost their friggin' minds. You could feel it in your eardrums. It's pandemonium. Seeing real emotion on people is so rare. It's like one of those real moments in time when you, you just can't recreate it. Everybody get the car! Each person is having this moment where like, I'm the 12th person, it's me. And they're standing up all excited and then they're looking around, they're seeing other people excited because they think, oh, I got it, I got it. And then somebody else would say, I got it, I got it. Someone else would say, no, I got it. So I'm I'm special, but I'm not special, but I don't care about being that special because we're all special. Everybody get the car! Just going to the show and being able to be in the same room with Oprah was the gift. So on top of that, you get a car? I mean, it's it's too much. I don't know how these women lived their next day after that. If somebody is gonna like pass out because they got Selma Hayek's favorite Ugg boots, like they're gonna go <laughs> crazy for a free car. To make sure that the audience made it out of this giveaway alive, the producers took some very careful precautions. They had to have paramedics on duty. People were screaming, people were passing out. I get it because the giveaways have been happening for a long time and the women were acting so crazy when they were given something so small that I love how producers were like, listen, we're gonna need to defibrillate some of these bitches. That's not unusual because, you know, they were worried about people getting really um, overexcited. And I think they always have somebody who's there to help people. Of course, giving away 276 cars would always be memorable, but we probably wouldn't still be talking about it if it wasn't for the way Oprah said those words. These crazy moments you've never imagined someone doing and screaming in this heightened emotion. I really do think it has to do with Oprah's delivery. Everybody gets a car! You have to add on that. Everybody gets a car. It would make a great song. It pops into my head once a month. You get a car, you get a car. Everybody gets a car. You know, when somebody, they're giving a speech and if they repeat something twice, they all revert back to you get a car, you get a car. She actually talks like that in real life. I mean, it's not some put on. Now, she doesn't do the Liz Lemon. No. I don't even know how that started or when it started. Um, but, you know, she does have a very distinct way of speaking. Were you, you silent, silent or were you, you silenced? silenced? That was one of my favorite lines in the interview. Yes, the way Oprah speaks is iconic, but she was saying you get a car so loud and so often for practical reasons. The reason I was like, you get a car, you get a car, you get a car, because the people were screaming so loud and they were confused by the keys. That moment 
when the first person opened and pulled out theirs, she was the first woman, somebody went, everybody else went like, huh, it's her. And then they opened theirs and they went, I have one, but she has one. I could see the confusion. People were like, what's going on? That's why I was like, you get a car, you get a car. One of the show's producers, Terry Golder, says he wrote the script and he remembers Oprah going through it and practicing it with more and more excitement in her eyes each time. I remember it so clearly how excited she was to be as she was preparing for the show. I've never seen so someone like so outwardly show joy like a cartoon. That was one of the happiest days of my life. The joy in that studio was palpable, which I'm sure you're reminded of every day online, where you still see gifts from that episode used almost 20 years later. The exact, like, exuberant stance that Oprah, Oprah is taking. Is it that one? It's the perfect me for just, like, uncontainable glee. The happiest gift. <laughs> I mean, does this gift not work for everyone? Like, ah, I mean, it's like the greatest gift for every moment. And then you would see like different things that would be Photoshopped into her hands. I've seen it with like hair, weed, cake. A baby's born. You're getting better from being sick. Uh, I'm late, sorry. Like, forgive me. It's just the perfect meme, perfect. I should use it myself, right? Once everyone finally calmed down a bit, of course, there was more. It was time to go meet the cars. Your cars are waiting right outside. And Oprah was like, come on, follow me. So she's leading this crowd of people down the street because they were all parked at a lot. It was just so much fun to just be running with the audience. The Oprah Winfrey show wasn't live, so the audience had to keep the giveaway a secret for a few days until the episode aired. The show airs Monday. Uh, which is our season premiere, so I'm trusting that y'all are my new friends. <laughs> no, this is so funny. The other night, because you know, this has been some, such top secret, I wouldn't tell, yeah, so Gail knew before Stedman knew. <laughs> As is the case with most things. Uh, oh my gosh, I bet they all went home and they were like, it's great, it was good, mm -hmm. it was good. I'm like, no, it's fine, it was good, it was really good. The only thing that bums me out about this story is the tax area. Anybody who wins something or is given something, you have to pay taxes on. And a lot of people don't understand that. Producers of the show even gave the option of accepting a cash payout instead of taking the car and having to pay taxes, but there still was some backlash around the whole thing. What, who's complaining about this? Oprah and the show learned from this whole incident, and in the future, they even used a CPA for other giveaways to help handle any tax issues that might come up for the audience. Oprah was like, no, no, no. I see the flaws, and I will correct them. And that's why she's iconic. The show's staff have said that the wild success of the first car giveaway placed a bit of a burden on future episodes. If every audience member from then on is expecting a car or maybe even a pair of Uggs at the least, it might be pretty disappointing when there's not a giveaway. I think that's quite a tall order. There's no real sort of knowing of like when you're gonna be able to get something. They're like, okay, we're waiting for our prizes. What do you got, Oprah? There were seven full seasons after the Pontiac gifting. And of course, there were plenty more giveaways throughout the rest of the show's run. And they often got bigger and bigger. You might not even know, Oprah gave cars away again after this. You want the keys to your brand new Beatles? Come on out, Volkswagen O! But nobody really talks about it because I think the reason we just can't forget her giving those cars away because it was so shocking. It had never been done. Like that amount of money, that impactful of a gift. That just proves that even Oprah can't out Oprah, Oprah. She doesn't live her life trying to top things. She honestly has never lived her life. Like I did that now, what can I do to make it better? She was always, I just want to do a really good show. That's what I want to do.
One way you can really tell how much this car giveaway looms in pop culture is by looking at how often it's been parodied. Like in 2013 when Oprah repossessed the Pontiacs for a sketch on Jimmy Kimmel Live. Remember how everyone jumped up and down and screamed and cried when you gave them all that stuff? Imagine how much they'll cry when you take it back. I get a car. I get a car! Or in 2010, when Tyra Banks broke out a bonkers Oprah impression during a much humbler giveaway on her own talk show. Now we have the meta parody of a parody with Doja Cat for Tyra Ween dressing like Tyra giving away the Vaseline. I'm about to reveal my biggest beauty secret ever! That's how you know that you are a trendsetter, where you are the source material for like generations of bits. Listen, the car giveaway may have been instantly iconic, but now it's a part of history. To this day, it's still one of the best moments, I think, on The Oprah Show. She's had many, but that certainly is one of the standouts. She broke the internet before the internet was there to be broken, really, you know? Oprah is culture, period. What is culture without Oprah? Oprah is really about this American spirit of grandeur. She really is somebody who likes being a force for good and really asks for very, very, very little in return. Nothing makes me happier than to see other people in their purest moment where joy is rising for them. See, Oprah is a woman of the people. I really miss the Oprah show, especially, um, you know, in the times that we're living in now, where things are so polarizing and so vitriolic and just so plain, just so damn mean. She's made me feel so good as a fan, just watching her show and watching her give away things. I can't stress how excited she was about that day. And for her, it, it is a moment of joy. She was, she was really all in. She was all in. It delights me. It makes me so happy to see other people be happy and to be able to do that for somebody. I mean, that's one of the great joys of my life. And every time I'm able to do it, no matter what. I mean, sometimes, honest to goodness, I'm just sitting around thinking, what can I do to make somebody feel really good today? <laughs>